Try and imagine what your life would have been like, uh, I don't know, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, 100 years ago, before the invention of the high-speed drill. Can you imagine how people lived? They must have lived, and in some cases, given that we've now learned there's a connection between the teeth, the heart, the brain, they must have died in agony. Sooner or later, if we live long enough, apparently all of us have trouble with the skeleton. It's the bones. They don't seem to last as long as the rest of us, but the bones, they seem to wear out, Cameron. I hope you Thank can you, explain Moses. why. <laughs> Thank you very much. Isn't that wonderful? The salamander, as we all know, can regenerate limbs, tails. What about us? This whole concept of being able to regenerate a limb, a tail, a whatever, a part of our body is very exciting. And there's a group of us out there in the scientific community that work in a field that we're now roughly trying to define as regenerative medicine. And just imagine if you had a heart attack or a stroke and you need a portion of your heart or whatever replaced and we can regenerate some tissue and then implant that into your heart and you have a fully functioning heart. Or you're a spinal cord victim and all of a sudden you can get out of your wheelchair and walk. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Well, what I'd like to do for you is share with you some of the work that we're doing on bone and the regeneration of bone using these regenerative medicine techniques. And to do this, I've had two patients that have graciously agreed to tell their story. So it's not going to be as much me talking as my patients talking. So first off, I'd like to introduce you to Janine McFarlane. And she came to me with a swelling on the side of her face, and her dentist said, I think there's something wrong with her wisdom tooth. She was 17 years old, last year of high school. Her dream and aspiration was to be a singer-songwriter. If you look closely on this screen, you'll see right here, this is what we call a panoramic radiograph, by the way. You can see the upper teeth, the nose, the sinus is there. This right here is the lower jaw. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a wisdom tooth. But if you look carefully around that wisdom tooth, there seems to be a dark area. And if you compare it to the other side, it looks different. Well, unfortunately, Janine had a tumor. It was luckily not a malignant tumor. It was a benign tumor, but a very aggressive benign tumor. And as a result of this tumor, Janine was going to have to lose essentially half of her lower jaw. So you can imagine the hopes and dreams that this young, courageous individual had were virtually being dashed. Not only was she going to lose part of her face, but her dream of being a singer might not be realized. So she said to me, Dr. Clokey, is there not anything that we can do to try and save that? And there was. We used the most sort of advanced techniques that we have in medicine. We did a, what we call a CAT scan of her face, and then with that we were able to use some modern technology to reproduce a three-dimensional image of her jaw. On the left side you see what it looks like, and then with that we were able to do a mirror image that allows us to then bend what we call a reconstruction plate that will be, form the foundation for the reconstruction of her jaw. So what we had to do initially is go in and take that portion of her jaw out. And there's the piece of bone that has been removed, and then to reconstruct, unfortunately using modern technology, we had to go to her leg. And we literally had to take a piece of bone from her leg with its blood supply attached to it. And you can see here we're using this reconstruction plate to now rebuild her lower jaw. This surgery took about 19 hours, required three surgical teams, and Janine was in the hospital for almost two weeks with um, <clears throat> about half of that being in intensive care. So then we had to go and perform a second surgery where we took bone from her hip to reconstruct that jaw so we got ideal form. And recovery was about five months. I wasn't able to walk. And there was still a lot of swelling. I actually want to do another surgery to build up this side so it'll, be, it'll kind of be the same, uniform. And also I wanted to remove the scar from my leg. Yeah. So. What Janine was essentially saying is that she's going to need at least a third surgery now to rebuild her face the way she would like it. And you can identify here on the left side, it looks slightly different than the uh, right side. 
and look at the scar that she's left with as a result of the surgery. But this time, instead of going to his leg or hip to harvest bone, we went to the shelf. It's a great way to stimulate your mind. You know, we need to work out uh, physically to stay in shape, but we need to work our minds as well. I'd like to introduce you to uh, the father of regenerative medicine, a Dr. Marshall Urist. In 1965, he published an article in the journal Science, and in this, he described a phenomenon. What he did is he took bone from different animal species, he processed that bone, and then re-implanted it back into muscle pouches within the animals of the same species. And what he found was that he could grow bone in muscle. And I think most of us can appreciate here that we obviously don't want to grow bone in muscle. So what he had done, essentially, is he had taken uh, the bone, he'd taken the, the mineral out of the bone, taken the water in the cells, he'd freeze-dried the bone, and he was left with a protein. And that protein stimulated something, a phenomenon that we now refer to as osteoinduction, which is he it actually took primitive stem cells, this protein, and converted them into bone-forming cells. I'd like to introduce you to a second patient, uh, Mr. Peter Russell. Mr. Peter Russell is a, was a prominent uh, business uh, person here in Toronto. At the age of 55, he realized the dream of Freedom 55 and reti retired from the financial industry. And about two years later, he presented to my office with something similar to Janine, actually the exact same tumor as Janine had. And so here's a gentleman, 57 years old, looking forward to gardening, uh, skiing, golfing, etc. And now I'm telling him he's got to remove a portion of his face. Well, I remember that day well. I think we were in the, uh, in the basement of the Toronto General Hospital in an examining room, much, much like this one. I mean, you went on to tell me that, that, you know, not to worry because it could be operated on. And I can't remember what the recovery time was, but it was something like three months or, was, or at a minimum of three months or something like, I don't know, whatever it was, it was not, I wasn't very happy. And I guess the expression on my face sort of told you that I wasn't happy. So you went, went on to give me this other alternative. And you said, well, you know, if you're prepared to um, take a bit of a risk, a bit of a chance, there is a new procedure. We went in and as we did with Janine, we had to remove the uh, diseased bone. We then had to place a metal reconstruction plate but this time, instead of going to his leg or hip to harvest bone, we went to the shelf. On the right-hand side, uh, there is a material that we developed in our research laboratories back at McGill University um, that we've been working, we worked with Dr. Urist on in terms of a delivery vehicle for the magic protein, or the BMP. And so we mix the two together. It's uh, very much like kindergarten. You've got your Play-Doh and you've got your little protein. You mix them together. And with that, you can create a bioimplant, uh, or biobone, as uh, Peter likes to call it, that will replace the shape, form, size of your, re your resected segment of bone. And here it is implanted into the jaw. And then here's Peter uh, one year later. And I want you to appreciate the fact that with, in his case, one surgery it took us probably no more than four hours, one surgical team, he was in the hospital for one day, no intensive care, we were able to completely regenerate one half of his jaw. It's pretty amazing, and we've, so far we've, we've treated uh, nine patients as of last week with this particular approach. And further to this, we went in and we looked at the bone, and it's hard to appreciate, but you don't see any difference in the texture of bone there because the bone we've created is identical to the bone that was native to the area. We put this bioimplant within the, mus the muscular pouch of the face, and we were able to regenerate this beautiful jawbone. I spent six hours on the operating table versus the 12 I would have spent if I had the leg done. And I spent two nights in the hospital versus probably uh, two weeks in the hospital, probably a lot of it or half of it anyway in intensive care. Um, the cost of the bone was, if I recall correctly, $3,000. Yeah. I was up and about and living a perfectly normal life six weeks after the operation. And it, and it was, other than not being able to open my mouth, it was more like probably about two weeks after the operation. There was really very little pain or suffering that was associated with it. And yet, if I had my leg carved up, I'd be walking around on crutches. I wouldn't have been able to go skiing. 
Um, who knows? I mean, double the chances for complications, I guess. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. If we look at the actual cost of Janine on the top here, uh, having her long surgery, three surgical teams, two weeks in hospital, requiring a second and a third surgery, and we worked together to find out exactly what the cost of that first surgery, just the one surgery was, was about $50,000. By using the regenerative medicine technique that we use for Peter, getting a superior result in a significantly faster period of time, less surgery, less hospital stay, the, the reduction in cost to the healthcare system for the, very fir for the first surgery was b less than half. Ladies and gentlemen, regenerative medicine, I think, has the potential of changing where we're going to go and what our future holds. By taking resorbable matrices, adding these bioactive agents to them, and then affecting or somehow or other inducing our host cells to regenerate tissues in an area that we now refer to as orthobiologics is really quite interesting and I think will change the way we look at medicine.